Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the meeting of the Brumford and Hood. Hello. Uh, we're dedicating this meeting to the Bromford Regeneration okay. Project. The mics. The, people yeah, mute their mics the mic please. and the video. Thank you. Okay. So before we start, can everyone please mute, mute your microphones for the moment so we can improve the sound quality? Um, and can you turn off your cameras with the exceptions of the presenters, unless you are the person speaking? Uh, which should increase the bandwidth and make sure that you've got uh, all this um, that you're situated in a room or environment which is free from distractions or any unnecessary noise emanating from radios or TVs. Thank you. I also confirm this is a public meeting and is therefore being live streamed on the City Council's website in order that the general public can view it. Um, and this will be later available on the YouTube site. Um, the press public may record and take photographs, except where there are confidential exempt items. Uh, do we have any apologies this evening? No. From the councillor. Okay, thank you. Um, during the meeting, we'll be using the chat function in the Microsoft Teams to communicate. So if people want to um, ask questions, can you just put in the in the chat speak and then I'll be aware of, of who is who's wanting to speak. Um, so I'll begin with some introductions. So my name is Councillor Diane Donaldson and I'm chairing this meeting in attendance. We have my ward colleague, Councillor Majid Mahmood, and we've got representatives from the Environmental Agency. Uh, we've got Claire Holly and Andrew Osborne, I'm not sure if he's here. Um, Jimmy Nguyen, all from the Environmental Agency, and from Balfour BT Vinci, representing HS2, we have Diran Katwa, Raphael Lasso, Frank O'Connor, and Lou Cash. <coughs> okay. So um, this evening's meeting is, is, as you know, is based around the Bromford regeneration. So we've got the representatives who are of the agencies that are uh, working on Bromford, namely the Environmental Agency, who are um, responsible for carrying out the work on the Flood Defence Scheme. And also we've got... Um, Balfour Beauty Vinci, who are carrying out the works for on behalf of HS2, which is basically the tunnel underneath the bank. <coughs> so, first of all, we'll start with the environmental agency and we'll ask um, their representatives to tell us to update us on the work that's, that's been carrying on and um, the future programme. And then we'll take um, Diran and his colleagues from uh, Balfour Beauty HS2. So if we can start, uh, I don't know if Andrew, is as, is Andrew Osborne here? <coughs> Andrew Osborne is not attending. Uh, no. I'll be in representing the Environment Agency along with Claire Holly. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. Um, okay, Jimmy, if you'd like to start off um, and just give us an update on, on the progress of what's happening and the uh, future programme, thank you. Yes, so good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for attending this this forum. And first of all, on behalf of the agency, we obviously uh, thank you all for your patience with the flood defence scheme. We know that it's um, it has overrun a bit and there has been some disruptions to the to the residents. And we just we thank you, especially during the time of COVID, um, the challenges that is presented in terms of the flood, the flood defence scheme itself, in terms of very high level program we're expecting that the for the area in in, in Bromford and Bromford Drive uh, which is more relevant to the to the residents that the majority of that will be complete towards the end to kind of mid to end of October um, barring no additional delays to the scheme and this is kind of high level but in terms of the the areas that we've been liaising with the council that are of particular interest 
to the, the residents, i.e. the skate park, the Muga Park. We're hoping to get that sort of opened and uh, fit for purpose and remove any sort of hazards uh, open to the public for the end of July. So we're looking at a date of Friday, the 23rd of July. Um, unfortunately, the, the the underground play park itself will, will not be ready for that for that date and we'll be handing that back to to the council to carry on with making sure that it's up to scratch in terms of health and safety and that will be with the council subcontractors um, so it'll be out of the agencies and off of that um, but in terms of timeline and, and and program that's not something that we have information at the moment and we're still liaising with the council regards to that so that's sort of high level Okay, and so um, the actual works to the flood defence, when will that be finished in, in its entirety? So in its entirety, for the, in, because the scheme itself is quite a large scheme, there's about 12 different construction sites, of which the embankment areas, the area that we look at, or we call Brom Bromford, the area that will be most visible to residents represents uh, four of those sites. Uh, so that area, again, we're looking at towards the end, mid to end of October for that to be complete, including the new cycle path, the earth embankment flood defence in, in its entirety, barring no significant uh, delays. Uh, the rest of the scheme, uh, is a lot of it will be in Castlevale, so it won't be affecting the residents of Bromford. That's more of a moving target, but that's looking towards kind of early next year. Right, so is is that um will that be a definite uh, end date? So we can expect to see the cycle path up and running um and in use and um all the the environmental agency will be completely finished in Bromford. Would that be that, that's the the aspiration and obviously it's the contractors program. As an environment agency, we're we're the we're the client, and that's we obviously want to want the scheme completed sooner rather than later. Uh, but in terms of the actual program, so we we don't own the program that belongs to to our contracting partner, and we just kind of manage that. And we've been trying to hold them to try to complete towards that date. But according to the latest program, that's that's what we're looking at. Um, but we do review the program on you know a monthly basis. Uh, and again, barring no major inter interruptions and issues, uh, that, that's the date that we're hoping to 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 complete. OK, and um, moving forward, will we, will we have better communications uh, along the way because um, we haven't been fed back properly of what's happening and. Um, you know, it'd be good to inform residents, keep them in the, in the loop of what's going on. Yes, yeah, so. So previously we had a communications officer, Imka, who used to attend these forums. Uh, Imka, unfortunately, has been off for for a long period and is coming back on a phased return. And she was kind of our main um, link between uh, yourself and, and the agency. We do speak to different parts of uh, the, the council. Uh, I think the flood risk management team, uh, we do have a, we, we do speak to that element of the council every two weeks and we do update them with the program uh, but yeah in terms of if that if the messages aren't filtering back to yourself we can certainly look at how to improve those channels but we're hoping with, with Imca coming back to the scheme uh, on a phase return that will help improve things yeah, yeah we were getting updates from Im Imca but then it suddenly sort of went quiet <laughs> we didn't hear anything so yeah that would be most appreciated if we can be kept in the loop of everything that's happening, especially if there's, there's going to be inconveniences around um, you know, the, the, trans the, the hinder transport links, etc. Yep, that, that is noted. Thank you. OK, and pass on the best regards to Imca. We do miss her. We will, will do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'll open it out to the floor now. Does anybody want to ask questions to Jimmy? You can either raise your hands or, or type in the chat. 
Uh, I see um, Paul Wright. Yeah, Paul, would you like to come in? Hello. Hello. Yeah, man. Faintly. Let me, uh, I'll come back to me. I'll change my uh, earphones. Give me two seconds. That's better. I can hear you now. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah. I'll ask questions then. Um, so first of all, yeah, please pass on our regards to Inca. I know she's been very good at communicating with us. I hope she's OK. Um, just a few questions from me. So one, uh, so assurances that the, the play park, as in the, the, the skate park and the, the basketball football pitch, that that will be reopened on Friday, the 23rd of July. Yes, that's correct. That's the aspiration. But the the children's play area and the climbing frame, that's that's a longer term thing that needs to sort in. Is that, is that the case? Yes, that's correct. Uh, the With that area of the park, it's it, was, it will no longer sit with the agency or uh, our contractors. That will then be handed back to the Result council. Politics. The Prime Minister locked down those that booed. Would, uh, could people kindly mute their microphones and uh, keep their cameras off while the Alyssa speaking? Thank you. It was just a thank you. There was a couple of other quick things. So, um, the one was uh, Imca was going to be working with Tame Valley School to do some artwork on on a part of the trail at the back of the community centre. Do you know if that's been progressed or is that still going to happen? I think we're quite keen Hi, to get... Paul. <clears throat> I can. Um, I'm. I'm happy to answer that one. Uh, we haven't progressed it just recently, though. I have been in contact with the school. Uh, regarding some of our works very recently, but it's, it's something we're still keen to do um, and it's something that we will be picking up. Uh, it's been a sensitive time for the schools, especially uh, with COVID. Yeah. It's been a difficult situation. So, um, yeah, hopefully we'll be picking this back up again, Paul. Cool. And then lastly, for me, uh, would it be good to think of maybe a, a, a handover, like, is, like a, I've, I've said this before in previous meetings, you know, maybe sometime around October. I know the weather might be up and down, but some sort of handover event to the community and a bit of a profile array, profile raising of like the cycle path and the walking path and everything. So that might be something like a, a nice ending to your to your time with us, and then a bit of a handover to the community and you know showcasing what you know the the, 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 the foot defence and um, particularly the, the cycling path and the walking path. Is that something that you think you guys might be up for? Hi Paul, I'll uh, I'll answer that one again. Um, absolutely, we'd be we'd be up for that. Um, ordinarily, um, when we finish the scheme, we we do do an opening ceremony. Um, but the problem is with COVID at the minute, we we don't know uh, what the restrictions will be. But given the fact that everything's okay, yes, we we will be doing uh, an opening um, type ceremony to make sure that there is something celebrated. So absolutely. Excuse me. Uh, can I just ask guests to turn their cameras off unless they're speaking? Okay, um, I've just seen in the chat. Sarah, I'll, I'll just update you on, on what you've missed out. Um, the park's going, the, the skateboard and the MUGA, the multi purpose uh, games area, that's going to be opened up on the 23rd. We've got a date of the 23rd to open that up. The rest of the park won't be ready until later on in the year. Um, we've been given the date of October. Um, and the, the unfortunately the zip wire and another piece of equipment and the climbing frame they're undergoing they'll be undergoing remedial work so that they'll be out of use at the moment but we will have the uh, MUGA and the skate the skate park as of next week as of, at the end of next week What I don't understand is, though, with this park, we were assured the kids would have it back for the school holidays. So now they're saying when we have it, we're not getting it back. That's what they're saying. The works. Um... What What's holding it up? Is it the flood defence work or is it the, the council fixing the park? Jimmy, if you'd like to come in and explain why um, it's not being delivered on time. 
So with the underground, the under 12 play area, that is, it requires more remedial works from third parties and it's not something that's in our control uh, because we're, we're not going in to, to fix or to do the remedial works. We're just doing the flood defence yeah, around the area. Yeah, the remedial works, the flood defence, the whole of the flood defence, because the park can't be reinstated until the, the flood defence work is finished. So is it because of the flood defence or is it because the park needs repairing? Which is it? It's because of the flood defence, because we can't start work on the park until the... So, so who's working on the flood defence? Who, who is actually working over there? Agency. Um, Jimmy is, is the representative from the environmental agency. And that's who's doing the work over there? They're doing the work so, on flood defence. So is... Then explain to me why it is taking so long. You see two guys there, that's it. And then they're gone by lunchtime while they're sitting there on the phones. Why is work not being done? Jimmy, can you come on in that one, please? I, I don't know why they're laughing. It's not funny. They're obviously not having fun, are they? It's not funny by no means, but I'm no, not but sure Somebody's laughing, laughing, but they're not having to live in it. They haven't got kids that have been in lockdown for months and have got nowhere to play. But no, let's have a good laugh because it doesn't affect them, shall we? Well, I don't know who's laughing, but whoever is laughing, would you kindly refrain, refrain from laughing? It's not, it's a serious matter. It and is, because we're having to live with yeah, it. Yeah, and it, this is very said, disrespectful. I would, I would like to know fair, what work is being done over there, because from what I see, nothing is being done. The bricks on top of that wall took them two months. Two months to put some bricks on. Yes, there might be big bricks, but two months. No wonder the park's not going to open because they can't get the work finished. It's been more than two months. It's been over a year. Yeah, no, no, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been okay. over. It, so it's, let's, it's been going on for 18 months to two years. But my argument is the bricks on top of that wall, it took them two months to do that. Two months. Can someone okay, explain that to me? Chance to Jimmy to explain why why the work is taking so long. Yeah. So first of all, would you apologise for the ongoing delays to to the project? We, as environment agency, we we did not envision the the scheme to be delayed as as much as it has been. Um, there were many challenges on, on the project, and we, you know we've been trying uh, our best to try to expedite and complete the project uh, as much as possible. I, I don't want to speak for the, the contractors uh, who, are, who who you would have been seen on site who are, who are carrying out on behalf of the agency to, to complete the works. Um, but I know there have been several challenges uh, which have added to the delay and we try to focus on the areas that we could complete first uh, that would be beneficial to the residents of Bromford and that was focusing on on the play park and and the skate park and the, and the Mooga park, uh, and and again I can we can only apologise that the that the under under twelve playground will not be open in time for the summer holidays, and the bit that so, we so we what, were able to complete was the skate park and 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 the Mooga park. Uh, so what, I know challenge, that, 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 what challenges are we on about here? I'd I'd like to know what the challenges were. So ever since the, the project uh, starts in terms of construction, and, I, and I, I don't want this to be a cop out. And so the challenges of COVID have been, they were sort of, they'd be more challenging than the project probably uh, envisioned. And I think progress has, uh, has suffered as, as a result of that. So when we started this project, we obviously didn't realise uh, COVID was going to hit and the restrictions that would be in place uh, and that's one factor but not all of it that's been one element didn't, 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 I'm sorry i don't mean to interrupt but do you not think it's easy to blame covid i know and covid's is, been an issue we've all suffered we've all had to isolate we've all had to take time off but what yeah, i'm but saying is somebody a, a needs to go somebody needs to go and that. see what the workers are actually doing because i pass it daily along with my husband, along with my kids. Nothing gets done. Nothing. 
They just stand there all day on the phones doing nothing. That's why it's not done. That's why the kids haven't got a park this summer. That's why the kids have now got nowhere to play at all this summer. Because they stand there. I don't care whether people find it funny, whether people think I'm being rude. They are lazy. They sit on their wagons, on their phones their whole time. I see it. And I'm sure plenty of others do as well. They just don't want to say they are lazy. Someone needs to go down there and sort the half a dozen out that are actually work, supposed to be working down there. If they'd have got done, this park would have been sorted and then kids would have somewhere to play. This has been my bugbear the whole time this has been going on. The kids are having to isolate. The kids haven't been able to go to school. Now the summer's coming and they've got nothing to do. We've got houses being built down the bottom so they've lost that area. There's nowhere for the kids to walk and play all because they can't be bothered to pull their finger out and get the job done. Okay, so magic point. Now let's uh, give Jimmy the chance to explain why the delays, why the environmental agency has had these long delays. Um, I mean, COVID is a big factor in this it, it does impact on the workforce but that there are let's see what the other factors are that are in play yes again we can only apologize for the frustrations it's caused for the, to the residents uh, and you know mentioned it with the children uh, during a time obviously with, with, with lockdown and the summer holidays open uh, you know restarting again uh, so Again, I didn't want it to be a cop out to say, and that's why I caveat to that at the beginning of, of COVID, but it has been challenged for many reasons. Resources has also been a challenge for our contracting partners. Um, the weather didn't play a, a great part in, in trying to build a, an earth embankment, which relies on clay, topsoil, seeding. It's the particularly wet weather we had um, over, the, you know, over the last several months has been a challenge as well because that impedes work. Uh, so there are a variety of, of reasons. We had, I mentioned resource, there have been on the contract side several resource changes. We've lost good members of the team to other bigger projects uh, in, in the local area. So, and having to come in to find the right people to come in and, and deliver and help deliver on the ground to make sure we have the, the right workforce to, in order to progress fastly. That's been an issue. And the current team now uh, working on the ground are, are in terms of the, the leadership of that team are, are quite new, um, but we, we do feel that they have the right competence to successfully deliver the scheme. Well, hopefully you have the right people in, in place now and they can progress this the works and they will be on target for, for October. Is that we can rely on that, hopefully? That's the aspiration, and yeah, and I know this project has been overrun for a while. M myself, I've only been on the project for about eight months, and and again, I've seen loads of changes within within the project team. Uh, it's not an excuse at all. It's just a reflection of the challenges that the industry, and not just with the environment agency and the construction industry, but many industries in the area, particularly in the, in the Midlands, are facing. I know that there are impacts on on the workforce because there's there's other factors being in there's a shortage of um, skilled staff, but I hope that you've got the right team in place now and this work can be progressed. Um, can I bring up in Councillor Majid Mahmood? He's got his hand up. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to the Environment Agency who for attending this meeting because. Organisation like Seven Trent who were invited on several occasions have still not responded to um, our invitation to attend because some of the issues that have popped up around the fact that that's Seven Trent's responsibility, not the environment agency responsibility. But I, I share the frustration of the residents because it's you know you can say COVID, but on in terms of construction, all restrictions on construction were lifted last year, July. So like it's been more than a year and the delay hasn't been more than three months, it's been a lot more than the three months that you would have expected because of COVID. There has been a number of complaints and concerns raised by residents, which we have been feeding back 
to Imki on a regular basis. And to be fair to her, she has kept us updated, but she also shares the frustrations of the contractors that are involved. The question you know, must be around, how are the contractors being monitored? What you know, contractual obligations have they got to ensure that their performance is in relation to what we, we have been seeking from the outset? In terms of the park itself, this is something that myself and Dan initially, we tried to open it for the Easter holidays, and that's going back three, four months now. And we were promised then, oh, no, you know, we're going to try our best for Easter. And then at the last minute, we were told, no, it's not going to happen because I think you mentioned the clay and some of the issues around the soil and stuff. So it never happened. Then we said, OK, fine, if Easter's not going to happen, let's at least try to go for the summer holidays. And you know, up until this morning, we weren't even told that, yeah, it'll be open for the summer holidays. And we've been waiting patiently as our, as our, as have residents and you know, my daughter's been, she went back to school last week, last day, got you know, turned back home again, South Wise Leighton again. And I'm sure that's the same with a lot of kids in and around Romford and Hodge Hill. And they need something to look forward to. If restrictions are being lifted next week, they haven't got anywhere to play. I mean, it's it's not just the fact that it's so, I think some of our frustrations are are targeted at the environment agency, but we've got a cluster of, you know, works that are happening in and around the Bromford, which is causing more and more frustration and anxiety for residents, and rightly so. What we really want is one: you know, are you are the new contractors being monitored in terms of the staff they've got? A number of issues have been raised today, both in the chat and in the forum itself. You now, what what action will you now be taking so that's fed back to the contractors? You know, what sort of like contractual obligations are you going to be putting in to ensure that the work is completed when? We've been told the work's going to be completed. Yes, we've got the you know, skate park and, and, and part of the MOOGA open, but that's because of also the work of the city council. Like we've been pushing the officers there to reassess the equipment which they did, working um, themselves outside of what they would normally be doing, just so that we could open up some of the park for uh, you know, some of the children to play. But it's not it's not good enough because we've still got lots of parts of the park that aren't going to be open. So we just really need and assurance tonight, that's why you've been invited to the meeting and we're thankful you've attended. But we need to go feedback to the residents. There's only a handful of residents in this actual meeting, but you know, there's thousands out there that need answers and they need something to look forward to, but it's just not happening. I'm not taking away the fact that the flood defence was necessary because I fought for this going back eight years ago when I was chair of the Flood and Risk Management Board. And the war, you know, it's taken them a long time and I... and. Whilst it's taking them a long time, it does look really nice when you're driving past it now, but it's taking so long and we do need something happening. In terms of the events for opening, I think we've cancelled three events, uh, uh, Chair, because of COVID and we couldn't make that and those were going to be more open. But again, it depends on the restrictions and, and as councillors, we'll do everything within our power as well to try to make it community events when, when everything is finally open. Thank you, Councillor Mahmood. Yeah, I think um, the, the needs to be the contracts need to be look at looked at, and uh, just are there penalty clauses in place um, that would spur the the contractors onto finishing on time and uh, and and a, um, a better management team in place. So Something we think we could um, bring in. Yes, yeah, in terms of some of the assurances, so we've been engaging with senior management from the contractor side and a lot of the frustrations that the residents have and you have, the councils have, the environment agency, we have the same frustra frustrations and we, and we equally get a lot of pressure from our senior management uh, because of the, the delays. So we've raised this directly with the contractor senior management and we've been given, re you know, assurances that we, that the delivery will improve, progress will improve, um, and confidence in, in progress will improve, and that they've made certain personnel changes within their team on the ground, uh, recent ones, uh, as a result of that. And we're keeping a very close relationship now with, with their senior management, so not just the local team, but above them, to ensure pressures are coming from all sides, uh, to ensure that we, we try to deliver the, you know, a project that will be, ultimately benefit the residents and the council long term and you know we, we do ask for more patience from from everyone and it's it's kind of inexcusable and you know it, particularly with the summer opening and and the effects it will have on on, on the local residents but 
that's the only thing we can give at the moment that we are when you were trying to manage the contracts as, as much as possible and we've we've escalated this along the chain to ensure that pressure you know is put on and things are heard in terms of contractual uh, elements we, you know this is something that has been that, that is looked at on a regular basis there is a, a contract in place um in terms of penalties there's it's not an awful lot unfortunately that we can do to add additional pressure um on on this but it is in the the contractors uh, and the agency's best interest for this to to be delivered earlier on time because there is a pain gain share mechanism as a result uh, of this and so you know the longer it takes the more it will cost both the, the agency and the, the contractors long the term. residents are feeling the pain um, and as as louise says she says uh, they feel they're being fobbed off and i can only convey that that's certainly not the case that we're trying to fob off the, the residents um, the, again all of the these all of the delays that occur come at a financial cost to a huge financial cost to the agency and all of the parties involved so it's, it's not something that we're purposely or intentionally trying to do and your frustrations are completely understandable and i, I would have the same if you know uh, as well and I, I do have elements of it because we, we're trying to deliver the scheme uh, and you know when the delay happens it doesn't you know it's not great for us uh, as a as an agency um, and in terms of communication, uh, Councillor uh, Mahmoud, um, I just wanted to mention that some of some of the delays that that happen, we do engage with members of the council on, on quite a regular basis. So it's, it's, a, it's a surprise to me that you weren't aware that some elements of the park would not be open until until ju just today, because this is something that's been you know flagged up and raised for 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 quite a while. So, that, so that's surprising to myself. And I'm not sure, Claire, if you want to add anything to that. I'll bring in Louise. Uh, I've got a few people that want to ask questions now. So I've got Louise. I'll take Louise, Sarah, and I think that's all I've got there. Louise and then Sarah. Thank you, Chair. Um, the thing that's frustrating is that as much as we as a community appreciate that there's a tier level to every business. There's always somebody above somebody above somebody and the pressure comes down to people that are on site. We appreciate and we understand that, but being asked to have patience um, is how much, how much patience can people have when we've been told three what is it now three four different times it'll be ready by this time it'll be ready by this time i my children are too too big for the park but like i said in the chat as a representative of the community as a volunteer um at the hub and at spurgeon's children's center um i am emotional about it because when we've got children coming up to us small children and they're saying, oh, we can't go to the park and seeing the sadness in their eyes. It's not about the parents wanting the kids outside. It's about the children. It's the children that are being let down, not the parents. And I think that's what needs to be really, really thought about through all this work that's happening. Um, and it really needs to be the date that gets given for this work to be finished, this has got to have a line drawn underneath it now. This has to be the final date. No more getting fobbed off, no more this happened, that happened, the other happened. Because I am issuing a complaint about the things that I've seen. COVID is not gone. And when we've got workmen spitting on the floor, that is not acceptable. When they could be, instead of standing around talking and spitting on the floor, doing some work and that's well, where part of the anger comes from if you see incidents like that report them to to um councillor mahmoud and myself and we'll, we'll uh, take action off this this is I will, thank you very much. Heard of, of anything like this and it's it's not appropriate but um we will be holding the environmental agency to their word they've given us that their word that it's going to be finished part will be finished for next the end of next week and then the remainder for the end of october 
it's here now um and that's no excuse we don't want no more excuses that's it definitive yeah. okay thank you louise uh, i'll take sarah then i'll take uh, councillor mahmood it's not really a question it's just a comment on something that what, what the gentleman from the environmental agency he said the the ramifications the financial costs is anyone here actually thinking of the mental health costs mental health that this is having on the kids having on the residents we don't care about what it costs this is all down to mental health kids are struggling adults are struggling because the kids are struggling that's what needs to be taken into account here not the costs that it's costing them it's what it's costing what us. he's saying is that they're trying to get it as finished as quickly as possible because the longer they hang yes, around yes, the more I appreciate that. What I'm saying is all, all they're worried about is what it's costing them. What I'm saying is they need to take into account the mental health issues that this is causing for the kids and for the residents. It's not all about money. No, absolutely. And I'll take Councillor Mahmood and then we'll come back to Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. The reference that I made around the play park and not being communicated to was it around the smaller play because we were told quite a few weeks ago that that may not be feasible because of health and safety and, and, and equipment was around the actual date because we notified the council officers at the date that most of the primary schools, not the secondary schools, most of the primary schools in the vicinity like Hodge or primary, they were closing on the 16th of July. So we expected the player to be opened in and around the 16th, 17th, which is the first Saturday. But we've been told, and then this morning we were told the 19th, we commenced in the 19th, and now we've been told the 23rd. So already in the space of a few days, you know, we've gone back from seven days to five, to five to, as to what we were expecting for it to be open. And, you know, I agree with the residents, but I, I do think that the environment agency now you know, something needs to be given back to the community for being so patient. And as Sarah has said, that it has affected children from a mental well-being state as well, because they've got nowhere to go, because we've taken some of the other new green spaces we had around the former Bailey and Stonycroft Towers for the building of the houses. There's not much green space is left. But obviously, Chair, we are working on trying to develop some of the green spaces to make into play areas. So that's something for the future. But in terms of what we're doing now, you know, I think really do think the Wild Agency should give something back more to to the children of, of the Bromford because they're having to put up with even more time without some of their play. So perhaps, you know, get your money together and get the contractors to pay some of the penalties that must be in the contracts for late completion and build some extra swings for us. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Mahmood. Uh, Jim, is that something that they could do? Is, you know, from the must have penalty clauses that there's extra cash available that, that can be, that can provide something for the children? In terms of, in terms of penalty clauses, uh, I'd have to double check, but there's, there's no, as far as, I, as I'm aware, there's no penalty for, uh, that we could put onto the contracts and then recuperate and then kind of take that money and give that back to the community in that way. But certainly uh, I take the, the councillor's point about seeing, seeing what, what what we could do as an agency um, uh, because of the delays and the frustrations and the mental health issues that have been caused and 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 all of that, uh, all of those issues. We, you can see what we can do to help to give give back to the to, to the community. I'm not sure what what form that will be in. I'm not sure that what what that will look like, but certainly that's something that we we can take back and discuss and see what what can be done. And okay. I'd like to, to and let me know what their thoughts are and what they'd like to see. But some sort of goodwill gesture would be appreciated. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think it would be a good idea. What I'll do is I'll when Imka comes back because obviously Ingham has a lot of experience in. In dealing with the community and, and goodwill gestures, etc., and we can discuss what our, what the options are, and what we what could we do to help out, and maybe she can engage with the community to find out uh, more. And 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 so just to um, on your point, uh, I didn't want to conv it, You mentioned that we were only uh, worried about the costs and and the monies, and that wasn't the point that I was trying to put across. And it was merely that when we're not trying to delay the scheme on, on purpose. Uh, 
that was the point that I was trying to put across and not that that's the only thing that we care about because at the end of the day um, the money because the environment agency is a government entity the money that is spent on these projects you know come comes out from from taxpayers money so it's, it's not it's not something that we take lightly um, but I completely agree with you that it's not just all about the money because the scheme itself is there to help regenerate and be uh, to benefit the community in in the long term in the longer term and you know that's the objectives of of the of the scheme it's to provide flood protection to the area of Bromford which then allows housing regenerations to happen so again the ultimate aim of the project is to benefit the community um, so apologies that came across uh, uh, that we were only focused on one that's not our intention uh, I've got um a comment in the chat from Mohammed here. Here, uh, all works in the area need better project management, physical inspections rather than relying on virtual reporting from contractors. Um, are there physical inspections taking place? Because it doesn't seem that way. <laughs> yes, there there are physical inspections uh, happening uh, multiple times a week. There is a separate team independent of both the environment agency and the contractors uh, and there is they represent the design team again it's a, it's a separate company uh, and they visit the site and they report back uh, any issues and they flag it up to the contractors again they, they bring it back to the, the agency so that we can add pressure on the contractors to make sure that the quality of of the the project is delivered as as per the works information and that if there are any issues that are found on site, they are rectified uh, as, as soon as, as possible. So it's not just relying on, on virtual uh, inspections. There are uh, multiple site visits that, that happened, uh, you know, three times a week and sometimes more than that. OK, can we just ensure that these are robust visits, that they um, take it seriously and, you know, implement um their findings and make sure, just push push it push it on as fast as as fast as possible yeah um, no that's fine okay i've got a comment from sarah the houses will be built before the flood defense is finished and um, louise is saying a perfect goodwill gesture would be fenced off green space we are losing green space all very well saying the flood defense is going to make the ground okay for building houses the families need green spaces. Um, we are looking to we keep as many green spaces as possible and uh, build play parks in other areas of, of the estate as well. Um, but this is something that's that's ongoing. But the main priority is to get this park up and running for the date we've got now and, and stick to the program, which is October. So um, does, can we guarantee that this will be finished in October? Hi, Councillor. I just wanted to make a quick comment uh, around the park uh, and also to uh, back up Jimmy as well. Um, we've made uh, opening the park a major priority. Uh, it's something we practically speak about pretty much every meeting that we have uh, together on Bromford. Um, and we were really aiming to open this up for the 16th and unfortunately we will have that week's delay it'll be finished by the 23rd uh, and we will open the Mooga and the skate park uh, by then um, yeah we apologize for that day and we really do understand uh, the implications that this has this delay has uh, for the residents we completely understand your frustrations but we're trying to do that as quickly as we possibly can uh, so hopefully on the 23rd that, that will be available to you um, and we will as long as there are no um, delays, unforeseeable delays, uh, we should be finished in October. So hopefully provide a little bit of reassurance um, for that date. Unfortunately, the delays that we've had up to this point have mostly been unavoidable to us. It's been weather related, um, COVID related and things that we just couldn't have foreseen, which is why the date has, has gone back. Uh, but all being well, uh, we should be finished for the dates uh, that we've created today. And uh, yeah, we want to finish this scheme as quickly as possible. I just wanted to provide some reassurance that you know, we are, we do know the implications and how much it's overrun so fast, um, so far, and we are uh, looking to make sure it's completed as quickly as we can do it to reduce the impact to the residents. Okay, thank you, Claire. 
Um, Louise, is that an historic hand you have up there, or is, do you want to ask a question? No, I've got Mohammed. He's got his hand up. Did you want to come in? Yeah, uh, yeah. Just um, a quick one. I didn't put it in the uh, the or tried to put it in the chat. Um, but obviously, every uh, everything that's been going on at the moment, it's been delayed. It's been delayed. Um, the environment agency work is over a year late now. Uh, the kids' playgrounds late. So what's going to happen if you reach October and the deadline's not met? They they can't do that then. Is it just going to be a case of, oh, well, we're in October now, we're just going to have to accept a new date that they give us? Or, you know, th there needs to be something there to push them to get completion done. Otherwise, it is just going to be a case of they're going to give you date after date after date, and you're just going to have to bend over and accept it. And that's why I'm asking for a definitive date in October. Um, Jimmy, can we come back on? Again, Councillor, I, I can only say that it's the, it's the aspiration for us to achieve that. We have a target and we're, we're, we're trying our best to achieve that target. I, I don't want to say to you that, but that there's going to be no more delays because I can't foresee if, if things might, that haven't happened, that, that will, that might end up happening. I can't, I can't give you that, that promise, but in terms of assurances and, and trying to uh, ensure that we don't slip on that again, uh, I've been I've been given assurances by senior management from the contractors that they've made personnel changes to ensure that this is okay. delivered on time. And if there are still the details of the senior management, so I can um, liaise with them because I'd like some at this point some written guarantees because we we're just getting date and you know one day and then it moves on and moves on but we need something definitive now perhaps sure we could we could ask the agency to provide us with a monthly report of the work that's carried out and the work that's ongoing and the work that's remaining so we can cover that and i do think that although they've got october penciled in it would be nice if they come back to us in August, early September, say that the work's actually done quicker than what they initially expected. Yeah, can I just jump in on that, Councillor? Um, so uh, project management, they should have a project plan which will have a timeline plotted and key activities against those uh, against that timeline. Um, so really, they should be able to provide, if not us, then at least you um, with a a copy of that so you can actually physically see the progress against their timeline um, and I think that would be better than receiving reports from them where um, progress might be slightly exaggerated at times. Okay thank you Mohammed. Um, Jimmy can you uh, let us know what works are outstanding? Yes yeah, so in terms of the embankment itself we're still so if I, if I try to break it down for you um, so the embankment is built up of an, a, an earth clay uh, embankment with the cycle path on top then we have a variety of different walls uh, CFA micropy walls cantilever walls uh, so the ones that you would have seen by the by the bus stop for example with the brickwork and the coping stones there are three walls in that section plus the embankments um, one of one of the walls goes around the seven trend uh, pumping station and uh, councillor mahmoud mentioned about the, the fatberg so that caused us a bit of delay because it meant that seven trend had to come in and, and use emergency powers to get rid of the fatberg and we can complete the, the section of the wall in that area and, and the embankment um, but mostly it's it's hard to, because it's split up into many different sections. Okay. Uh, so how how many walls are so three walls? So how many are completed and how many remain? So two of those are more or less complete. Uh, one of them, uh, sorry, there's there's four walls because I count the one with the, the at the seven Trent pumping station. Two of them more more or less complete. It's just finishing work. So things like the brickwork. Coping stones, 
and the reinstatement of the, the soil around those areas. The, the main element really is the earth embankments in different sections of the of is like a two two kilometer stretch. So it's different sections within that that area. There are other, other there are other barriers as well um, with with things that like additional permissions uh, applications that we need to ensure that's all in place uh, in all its complete different sections. Um, in terms of percentage of of high level percentage of this whole area of the embankment of the walls, um, it's around seventy five percent complete. Uh, I need. I need to. I'll go back and double check the the full program. As um, uh, I think it's uh, Mohammed mentioned uh, in terms of the progress on the program, but we're looking at that's the sort of the high level percentage. So, so how many months would that take to finish the walls? Um, Again, I'd have to look because they are in different uh, percentages okay. of completion. But again, for the entirety of that. We're hoping that it's our aspiration and on the latest uh, program that's towards the end of October for all of those sections to be fully complete. Can you come back with, to us with a breakdown of, of the outstanding works and the timeline so we can present that to the residents? That's something I would need to discuss internally with, with the agency first. Um, but I will say that we have in the past shared programs with the council um, so it's not something that we've we've hidden from the council. Uh, we have shared, you know, multiple times what our program looks like. Uh, but in terms of sharing, you know, I, I need to go back and discuss that internally first before I make a commitment. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. And also, how many contractors are working on the site on a daily basis? I, I think it varies, and again, I'd have to go back and find out the exact number. I'm not sure the, the exact number, uh, but I will feed back the what's been mentioned by, by the residents. Levels, would that increasing the staffing levels would that be something that could speed the project along? It's something that we can discuss with with the the contractors, but again, it's the agency doesn't own that that site. You know, the, the site. At the moment, it belongs to the, co the contractor. They give us their program and the resource, and then they indicate to us how they're going to complete complete that. Uh, so it, it, I'm not going to commit to some to just say that we're going to just be able to chuck chuck resource and money into in order to just uh, to complete the works uh, quicker. It's not something that I can commit to right now. But obviously, yeah, that requires a lot of. Um, more discussion and uh, approvals, etc. What we can assure you of, though, is that we will um, endeavour to complete the scheme as quickly as we can. And what we'll do is we'll go away and have conversations with our um, contractors to see if we can speed up the process. But currently, the program that we have, um, the contractors believe, um, is kind of the quickest that we can complete it um, at the minute. But yeah, we can definitely take those that feedback mm -hmm. back to the contractors. And uh, Mohammed Kay is asking, has the contractor's annual leave in the summer been factored into the timeline? Yes, yeah, so that would all be factored in uh, in terms of resource and resource level for, from both the agency and, and the contractors and other third parties that are involved in, in the wider project. Uh, any more questions on, on this before we move on? Last opportunity. Sarah, do you want to come in? Because I see you typing away there. Just quickly, um, Claire and Jimmy, I don't mean to be rude by calling them by the first names, but I can't see the surnames. Have you guys actually been down to the site? Have you guys actually come down and monitored what's going on? Have you come down and monitored the guys that are supposedly doing their best to get this done to the date that we've been promised several times. So um, I can I can pick that up. So um, Jimmy has been on site uh, and is on site quite often um, to monitor um, to monitor the progress on site. But um, we'll definitely take back your feedback that um, you've seen act no activity with people on site and we will challenge actions uh, about this. 
um, to make sure that we can we can address address your comments. You know, we would be equally yeah, as, I mean, as concerned as you. So um, yeah, absolutely, we'll, that, we'll take your feedback. That's my biggest concern. You keep saying that I'm not going to go on much longer because I've got other stuff to talk about. But you keep saying you're pushing to do your best. You're pushing to do your best. Them guys, I'm sorry, are not doing their best. And that's what needs looking at. And that is the problem here. That's the hold up. It's not you guys. It's the contractors that are over there. The tarmac has turned up two weeks ago. My God, them guys worked hard when them tarmacers were there. But that's the only time they have done. That's well, what certainly... needs addressing. It's the contractors. It's not you guys. You guys are taking the flack for them. And that's not fair. But obviously, there's some lack of... Um supervision and there needs to be stronger management so that's something that Claire and Jimmy can take back and uh, speak with the management and, and make sure that the management put robust um, contracts in place and, and make sure that they stick to the targets. Certainly we'll, we'll take your, your feedback uh, back on board and and yeah, again, I do I do visit site quite regularly uh, and speak to yeah. the the guys on the ground who are leading the progress. And as I mentioned earlier, that there is a, a newer team on site uh, that I I certainly have more confidence in. Um, that I, I speak to on a regular basis, uh, not just visiting site on the phone, you know, getting lots of updates, etc. Uh, but certainly everything that's been mentioned to the, um, in this forum this evening, we will feed it back. In terms of inactivity, because that's obviously not that's not something that we want to hear from the residents, and certainly we hope that that's not the case at all. Um, okay, so we'll look forward to the feedback, and um, we'd like some written confirmation of when it'll be finished, and something that uh, the environmental agency can offer to the the residents for their prolonged patience. I think they deserve it. Thank you, Jimmy, and thank you, Claire. Okay. Right, we'll move on to the next item. We've got uh, representatives from Balfour, BT Vinci, who are carrying out the, the work on behalf of HS2. So we've got Duran Catwa and Raphael Lasso, Franco Connor and Lukash. Is that correct? That is indeed. Uh, well look Thank first, you, first of all uh, Councillor Donaldson, uh, Councillor Mahmood uh, and Beverly, can I take this opportunity on behalf of uh, Balfour BT Vinci and my colleagues to thank you for being proactive and for inviting us yet again. Uh, we, we, we clearly did a, did a good job last time. Um, so we're hoping to sort of provide a progress update this evening about our works within uh, the Bromford and Hodge Hill ward. Uh, there are two areas where we're working currently. Uh, it's sort of around Thameside Drive, uh, which is the Bromford shaft uh, and uh, Birmingham Road B4118. Uh, but I'll bring up my pres our presentation and uh, we'll rattle through that because I'm mindful of time. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can yeah. see it. I think. Yeah, we can. But could you slightly enlarge it because it's not. Yeah, Is that any better? better? Yeah, that's much. Brilliant. Thanks very much for that. Uh, well, COVID, I think we've spoken quite a lot about COVID. Obviously, Freedom Day is, is Monday, but who knows what Mr. Boris Johnson will say in the coming days. Uh, Councillor Donaldson, you've also already mentioned our names. We've got Lukash Pichowski, the site agent, Frank O'Connor, who's our structures manager, Raphael, our site engineer, and there's myself, who works in both of BT Vinci's community engagement team. Uh, Bromford tunnel the original design. Um, this is for those who weren't at this forum uh, in, in March when we last presented uh, and there was an original design. Uh, the tunnel was going to sort of built, be built um, 
over ground, uh, but we looked at uh, the design and uh, it's now going underground, uh, so under Bromford. Uh, this is the updated design, which we also picked up on uh, in March. Uh, so a tunnel portal is the entry or exit section of a tunnel. Uh, and the eastern portal of the Bromford Tunnel was originally, as I said, set to be located in Castle Bromwich Business Park. Uh, but now, following design changes, the portal will be moved three kilometres to the east. So it's located near Water Orton. Uh, and that's a, a view of the Bromford Tunnel. It's not, or not the best of images, but uh, it's, it's an image. Uh, here we've got uh, benefits of the Bromford Tunnel extension. So the extending the tunnel will provide several benefits, increasing the length of the tunnel from 2.8 kilometres to 5.7. Uh, and that's removed the need for complex engineering above ground. Um, and there will be less land required at Castle Bromwich business area. Uh, Park Hall Na Nature Reserve will be less impacted by construction and we will no longer need to clear ancient woodland at this location. So I know on this forum we've already spoken about green spaces. So that is something that we are very mindful of. Uh, that we want to um, maintain as much uh, ancient woodland and green spaces as we possibly can. Also, there'll be up to 260,000 fewer, that's fewer, uh, HGV movements over the course of the construction. And that, again, is to minimise our impact on the environment. Um, Frank, can I, Frank or Raphael, can I ask you to perhaps uh, give an overview on this slides, please? Yeah, I'm happy enough, Raphael. I'll run with this if you want. Um, hi, good evening. So evening, just to, hi, you're just looking at this is like a cross section looking at the uh, uh, the tunnel going from the east portal, which is on the right hand side um, at Water Orton. Uh, it's just beside where it, it goes over the M6 Birmingham Road um, and we will be on the uh, south side of the road. So um, a viaduct comes in over the M6, M42, and it dives down underground at Water Orton, and it will continue underground um, underneath the River Tame down towards the uh, the old um, car um, auction area in the, the business park, and it continues down adjacent to the uh, M6 all the way down to the West Portal at Washwood Heat. So we were just giving a, a, um, a an idea of what kind of depths we're working at. So it'll be at ground level. Um, well, it starts at ground level at the East Portal, um, but the, the launch depth for the tunnel machines will be approximately 20 metres below ground level. And it dives fairly sharply uh down to the deepest point which will be at the the shaft in um uh down at the car auction orton way and we're approximately 50 meters deep um at that location and then it starts uh, rising again back up towards the surface over at washwood heath um you'll see these uh, vertical lines on the drawing there and that's an indication where we'll have um, cross passages constructed between the tunnels and these are for um, emergency arrangements if there was ever a, a breakdown or um, a stoppage on uh, one of the uh, tunnels that people could move from uh, the up and down or the north and south tunnels um, as a way of uh, escape it's it's standard practice for all um, metro tunnels okay um just a quick view of the uh, it's like an aerial view of what the structure at the shaft will look like um, upon completion. So it's uh, on the right hand side, uh, you're looking through, you're seeing the um, the up and the down or the north and south drive on the tunnels. Uh, the shaft is the vertical structure in the middle and we have a lot of um, underground uh, structures. So there's uh, caverns, edits uh, that we have to construct that we will um, do from within the shaft and we will excavate um, by uh, NATM or SCL method uh, where we excavate and we spray concrete onto form a lining underground and this is to provide um, uh, connections for uh, power, ventilation, communication and fireman emergency access 
and then you've got the head house structure on the surface, which will, in the event uh, of any emergencies, it would provide, it'll either blow um, fresh air into the tunnel or it will take dirty air from the tunnel back out. It will also provide access and um, uh, backup power generators and communication um, for servicing the tunnels as well. Just on the on the shaft, uh, sort of um, one one of the things we, we will be doing is is monitoring noise. So so to make sure that the noise does not exceed the uh, levels. The, so one of the asks uh, to this forum is if if you happen to know anyone who lives in or around Cadbury Drive uh, and would be prepared to have some noise monitoring equipment installed, uh, please get in touch with me. Um, we obviously will make sure that. Um, minimal disruption is caused but it's 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 a, it's a necessary uh, uh, activity that we need to carry out whilst uh, uh, this sort of work is being carried out so just a, a minor request to to everyone on this call no thank you very very, very good point and yeah it would be very helpful if we could and if it helps us that we can actually uh, ensure that uh, we keep noise to a minimum and uh, and i think that's benefit to everybody around us um, just to give you an update, the temporary offices are being installed uh, from today, so we're we've about half the structure in at the moment. So it will continue for the next couple of weeks. Um, this this will be um, offices and welfare for the staff and all the workers that will be based on site. Um, this is just some of the GI equipment where we're doing uh, testing of the area just to ensure that we um, we design our working platforms and structures correctly. OK. Again, same thing. And this is going back over to the East Portal at Water Arton, and it's just giving an idea of the stripping all the topsoil and preparing the uh, platforms for um, the dewalling operation over in the East Portal. OK. Um, again, it's just uh, these are just status updates just about some of the ducting and some of the, the concrete bases and platforms we're installing over here at the moment. And, this, yeah, yeah are on, you happy? Man. No, work away. Yeah, uh, no, this this sort of gives an, uh, a sort of indication of, of upcoming works. And as Frank said, we, we've already commenced on the uh, UXO surveys and trials. They're ongoing, the site office installation photograph, which we just saw that commenced today, and it's going to go on until the end of this month. Uh, then we've got the removal of soil and material. Uh, so I, I, I'm not going to read through all this, but as you can see, uh, see the dates there. These are indicative dates, uh, and we are trying our best to keep to program. Um, footbridge installation, we've got here the 31st of July. Um, that's on the sort of B4118. Uh, where our works are being carried out. Uh, and at the bottom there, I've got delivery of tunnel boring machine. Now, this is a very exciting uh, time. We are actually going through this at the other side in, in Warwickshire. Uh, the tunnel boring machine uh, is going to be going under the Long Itchington Wood, and we are actually going to name the tunnel boring machine. Now, that's, that's going to be a, a very big ceremony. Now, the same is going to be happening next year in Birmingham. So just a sort of heads up to everyone, get your thinking caps on, uh, a name for the tunnel boring machine, uh, that the winning name will be sort of uh, posted on the tunnel boring machine and there will be a competition, but that's in the future. Uh, but I, I, I'll obviously talk about this in a bit more detail at yeah. the relevant uh, yes. meeting. Will, the, will the, there be some prizes for the, the winners of the competition? Uh, the winning prize will be that the, the winner will actually get to come to uh, to site and unveil the name. So it's obviously going to uh, attract a lot of uh, media coverage uh, locally, regionally and nationally, internationally as well. Uh, so it's an opportunity to become famous. Uh, and as part of the participation in the competition, uh, we'll be con connecting with schools, community groups. Um, so anybody who sort of uh, knows or happens to know of any schools, organizations that you think we should be engaging with, again, drop me a line. As I said, this is a little bit in the future, which I'll uh, talk about at the relevant meeting. 
this is the overall construction timeline. Again, very high level, uh, but, but we have a vision. We are trying our utmost in the um, uh, in, in the situation that we're in, that we stick to program. Uh, and so far, Touchwood, things are progressing uh, well. Again, this is a construction program, very high level. Uh, Councillor Donaldson, you'd asked me in your request uh, when you invited us to this meeting to talk a little bit about giving back legacy to the community. So uh, we have a community investment initiative. Uh, and basically what that means is that we like to uh, give back to the local community, be it schools, community groups, um, who, any, any local sort of uh, groups that Balfour BT Vinci would go uh, and support in terms of volunteering, landscaping, uh, mentoring, giving talks in schools, uh, sort of educating people about tunnel boring machines, what are tunnel boring machines, I must confess, before I started this role about seven months ago, I'd never even heard of tunnel boring machines. And now um, some might say I'm an expert, but far from it. Uh, one of the uh, organizations we helped earlier this year was Erin Gobra. It's a Gaelic football club in Erdington, uh, and they uh, held a food bank collection. So colleagues from across our offices in Birmingham, we came together collected lots of uh, food items and we presented it to this group. They were absolutely over the moon uh, and we actually made it onto ITV Central News' Instagram page as well. So uh, again, it's it's about working collaborative, collaboratively. Uh, there's also the Community Environment Fund um, and I'm happy to circulate the links to these um, uh, funds. But these, from my experience, the, these are sort of a uh, Sorry, I've uh, dashed through that. Bear with me. So yeah, the, 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 these funds, uh, organization, businesses can apply for, but in my experience, these are a bit longer term, so they do take time. Uh, however, the, the more sort of uh, shorter term goals would be if anybody on this call, on this forum knows of any organization, individuals, who you feel would benefit uh, from our community investment fund, then please, perhaps through Councillor Donaldson, through Councillor Mahmood, Beverly, uh, get in touch with us uh, and we will certainly consider uh, your, your, your sort of ideas and suggestions. And that's, uh, that completes our presentation there. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Diran. That was a, a wonderful presentation. Um, We'd like, could you circulate these slides to us so I can send yeah, us the slides and I can pass it on to the, the uh, whoever wants to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. About the competition, is it in, yeah, is it, is it great unveiling a machine, but is it, there's something more um, tangible? In terms of a prize? Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, it, it's a little bit in the distance, so we, we've not really discussed that in depth, but um, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure, but I, I'll, I'll ask the question and I'll come back to you on that. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Um, I'll open it up to the floor now if people want to ask questions. I can see I've got uh, Louise who's got a hand up and... and Councillor Mahmood was first, I think. OK. Councillor Mahmood and then Louise. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you, dear. And again, very informative as always. And thank you for the excellent work that you're undertaking alongside your colleagues around the HS2. Perhaps you can uh, lend some of your contractors to our environment agency partners and they can perhaps speed up the ongoing flood defences. <laughs> you seem to be monitoring your contractors a lot better than, than they are. Um, Cadbury Drive, you talked about noise monitoring equipment, that's actually in the Castle mm -hmm. Vale ward, so perhaps, I mean, we can email the councillor for you in Castle Vale or Beverly can take that up and they can come back to you whether they've got any residents who are willing to install some sound equipment. And obviously, if there's anyone in the Bromford that has experienced any noise from the ongoing works, then please do let us know. Around the Community Business and Local Community Fund, what would be really good if we could have a conversation because we're, we're sourcing, because 
of the impact of not having enough play spaces, especially around the Bromford side of our ward. Um, it would be really good because most of the uh, disruption that takes place is around the Bromford, around HS2. If we could, you know, have a conversation with yourselves and some of your colleagues around a HS2 pocket park. So it's just, it'll be a smaller park, not one of the huge parks. We haven't got that space to give, but just something which HS2 can basically brand a name as well. So we've got a lasting legacy of HS2 coming. Because in the Bromford, uh, uh, six, seven years ago, when the plans were changed not to come over the Bromford and to come underneath the Bromford, we don't see that visibility as much as we would have done if you'd come over. So I think it'd be really good to show that legacy and then to sort of like have arrows and some description of the fact that you have got the tunnel underneath, right underneath the the, the Bromford. And I think that would be really good. And be something good for HS2 as well in terms of, and you've said you've got some uh, people who are going to, who are willing to volunteer, et cetera, and they can perhaps do some of the landscaping, et cetera. But then obviously you can you can pay for the play equipment because we're always looking for some money for the play equipment. Um, just a question around, um, I saw in the news a few months back that there's a major investment around, um, it's linked to the Bromford, but not primarily around the Bromford, but it's all linked to HS2, around Arden Cross, the HS2 interchange, where there's, I think, about £50 million going to be invested around new homes and a mini town in that part of the area. Would that have an impact in terms of um, the work that's been undertaken around here on the Bromford and in terms of any of the infrastructure changes, if there is going to be any? And the final question is, I'm not sure if you can help me with this, but is HS2 related? We were told a while back by some of your colleagues that um, the Allen Rock Road, the bottom end, where you've got the Salt Lake Viaduct, that part was going to be closed at some point in the future. Do we have a timeline for that? And if we do, what, where would the diversion be around the other side of, of um, I think it's the Star City route? For us to come to the Bromford, because people, you know, people that live in the Bromford, although it won't directly impact us, but it will have an impact on the traffic that comes to and from the Bromford. Thank you, Councillor Mahmood. I think you raised some fantastic and really pertinent points there. Um, I'm very conscious of time, uh, and I've noted down several of your points. So what I suggest that I do is, if I contact you offline, uh, and then perhaps we have a conversation around this. Uh, just on the H on, on the Alum Rock Road, Saltley. Yes, there is an indicative timeline which I'd be very happy to share with you. Uh, on the Arden Cross bit, I'm not entirely sure, but I'll look into that. Uh, and and the community investment um, uh, elements that you've spoken about. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about it. You know, I I I'm, I I think that there's a lot that we can pick up uh, and sort of work together on, on developing some sort of strategy. So thank you so much for raising your points, uh, Councillor Mahmood. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mahmood. Uh, Duran, I've got a question um, about railway lines, railway stations. Um, do you do you have any information about projects, um, possible projects going forward on railway stations in and around the Bromford? Is there any possibility of that coming into fruition? I think that is the question that has been previously asked, and uh, my understanding is, uh, Frank, correct me if I'm wrong, 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 wrong here, but between uh, London and, and Birmingham, there's going to be, um, in fact, between Birmingham and Leeds, that there are going to be 25 stations, and I'm afraid Bromford is not featured uh, among those 25 stations, uh, but there will be sort of link stations very close to these uh, main uh, stations uh, that uh, pre passengers could, could use. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, Frank, if you want to come in. No, you're correct. No, correct. Thank you, Frank. So would there be any stations that are linking up to the city centre, to New Street or Moore Street? Uh, yeah, Cur Curzon Street. Curzon Street, okay. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so I guess Curzon Street will be the nearest to uh, to Bromford. Yes, you're right. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Uh, Louise has got her hand up. Louise? You'd like to come in? Helps if I unmute, doesn't it? Thank you, Councillor. Um, so my original, um, what I was originally going to ask um, isn't now relevant. Um, but when when um, Majid was speaking, um, I found the things that he was asking were on point um, and interesting. 
but then you came back with we'll talk offline so i appreciate there is a time thing here um but the questions that majid's asked we all need to know those answers when you have that conversation with him offline how will we then know what those answers are and what you discussed well look louise you you raised a very fantastic point if i may say that uh, and I only said uh, what I did to Councillor Mahmood in, in the interest of time. Um, however, I'm a firm believer in being fair and transparent, and I think Councillor Donaldson is very much aware of that. So my intention is and was that the conversation I have with Councillor Mahmood, perhaps I then, after our conversation, I uh, send Councillor Donaldson and Beverly an email with the bullet points, which perhaps, uh, Beverly, you could email up over to the residents if you have their email addresses. If not, then I was uh, hoping to uh, present uh, the outcomes of our conversation at the next meeting. However, if you feel that you, you want the answers now, then I'm happy to uh, provide that. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. That answers that perfectly. Thank you very much. You're very Thank welcome, you. Louise. Thank you. And in fact, if um, uh, Councillor Donaldson, I'm happy for you to give my email address to Louise uh, and to, um, I know Paul Wright has had some fantastic things to say as well. Uh, and I've observed that at the last meeting and at this meeting. So if anybody wants my email address, uh, please feel free to get in touch. As I said, I'm a firm believer in, in fair and transparent communications. Thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. You're very welcome. Uh, I've got Mohammed who's asked his, uh, speaking about the local stations, yeah, they will be local stations. Uh, it's not linked to HS2, but Duran's going to get us more information around those. Okay. Um, is there any other questions for Duran? No. I can't see anybody else asking any more questions. Um, well, thank you, Duran. That was a, a wonderful presentation, really informative and professional. Um, well, that's very kind of you to say, but I can't claim all the credit because uh, Frank, Raphael, Lukas, they have been, it, it's, it's, it's teamwork, I must confess. It's teamwork. It's a wonderful team effort that, it, that you've made. And, uh, thank you. Really informative. Um, yeah, thank you for coming along and uh, answering the questions. And I'll, I'll pass on uh, your, your email address and... Um, the information that you give, I'll pass on to the residents. So uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you to uh, the rest of the team, Frank, so I can't remember all the names, Lukash and Rafa Raphael. Uh, thank you for coming along this evening. And we look forward to seeing you again. And if you can see what um, prize is, if there's some for the competition ongoing, uh, if there are, even for, prizes for the runners up as well so everybody can sort of feel part of it it would be great so how that uh, that uh, very very quickly to say how that competition runs is is we put out a, a a sort of call for names uh to everyone across birmingham uh and then those entries come via an online form uh those are then shortlisted by a panel and we shortlist uh, down to uh three names and then the the winning name is selected from from those three names, and that's the stage we, where we at on the Long Itchington in in Warwickshire. Okay, thank you. Right, so uh, thanks for that, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Um, thank you once again. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, so we can, oh, I've got some new messages down here. Let me. Thanks, Louise Vouchers. We'll always, um, I'll pass that back to Diran uh, in the email. Right, we'll move on to the next agenda item and uh, councillor's update. Is there an, um, Councillor Mahmood, is there anything that you'd like to update on? Yeah, thank you, Dan. Yeah, I think perhaps with some of the questions that have been raised, it would be good to invite Network Rail 
to a future meeting um, just so that you know, residents are aware of the plans and proposals that are being put in place around connectivity with railways. Uh, I gave an update around the Fatberg issue. We were told this morning initially that the traffic management scheme around Chipperfield Road and Collingborn Avenue was going to be removed. And later on, I had a conversation with one of the managers. And uh, sorry. Oh, is Darren still here then? Is he? Yeah, Darren's still here. Oh, okay. So I was just, I just saw that flash up. Yeah. Uh, okay. And um, and then I spoke to one of the managers, and basically, when they had a review, they're just mindful of monitoring the performance of the sewers now that the bulk of the Fatberg has been removed in case that they would have to come back and put the traffic management scheme back in place in a few weeks. So they're going to review the, well, they're going to monitor the performance the next few days and then uh, give me an update on Monday next week. So we'll know where we're going. But what they said was that the, the end is sorry that, you know, we're, we're coming very, very close towards the end. So just thanking everyone for their patience um, around that. We've had um, an email around, you know, we had a previous meeting around the £35,000 fund that is available for Com Commonwealth Community Games funding in, in the ward. We've had three applications were submitted. None of them, unfortunately, have been approved. Two of them, um, there's some further information, I think, is required and one needs strengthening. Um, I haven't got the details of the actual application, so I can't share them because they've not been provided yet. But I would encourage everyone, I mean, you don't have to be part of a community group. You can just get together as residents and just bid for some funding as long as it, it fits in line with our ward forum priorities around cleaner, greener spaces and safer communities, then it's something that will be looked at. So it can be a small bid, it can be a large bid. I would encourage your residents and if you're in groups or even consortiums might be a better option to do that. But we did have an extensive meeting over that previously. So I'm not going to you know, talk more about that, but we will have something in the future. Um, good news is uh, we're up and running again with advice surgeries face to face. From next month, there'll be at least one surgery at the Bromford uh, Christian Church on Bromford Drive. I think it's 180 um, Bromford Drive. And there'll be a second advice surgery at the Tesco. That'll be an evening surgery. And Bromford will be a daytime half past nine surgery on the Saturday. And we're potentially looking at having a second surgery because we're mindful of the fact that lots of residents have not been able to see us and may have uh, issues that they would want to raise in the Bromford. Um, so we potentially have two in the Bromford if we get the go ahead and one in Tesco. And we're going to continue with one more online advice surgery, which hasn't had a great pickup, but it does, you know, it, it, it's advertised heavily, but people do call in. So when the online um, surgery is open it gives people that time they know that we're available to speak to them so i think it's pretty useful to keep going with that for the time being and then to look at it again in the future once the face-to-face -face surgeries are up and running but obviously you know with covid restrictions still there that's something that we're going to be doing we had uh, we had one of the mobile vaccination units and you know thank you to paul wright i think he's in the meeting for his perseverance in that and selling efforts with the nhs and Something that I, I was pushing as well for a while. Last time I, I, I was given a unit award and prioritised residents here, but obviously there is an issue around people being able to commute that far. So we had a decent turnout in comparison to other mobile units that they've got across the city. Um, I think when I got there about, the second time I went about two o'clock, there was 26 people I think were vaccinated and they're expecting a few more. Doesn't sound like a lot, but these are people that basically, you know, be, you know, hard to reach people. So it's 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 good because the one unit that they had, they only had two people turn up. So we had a lot more than that. I think there was more that came afterwards. We've got another one on the twenty first of next week, Wednesday. So if you know anyone who isn't um, who has not had the vaccine, and there's the figures as of the fourth of July. I believe is around 6,154 people who are eligible for the vaccine, I over 18, uh, have not had it in the Bromford and Hodge Award. Uh, we're more or less, we're, we're towards the higher side for the over, over 80s in the city, but towards the lower side for, for people over 18 in terms of vaccine. So it's something that I think um, 
it's not just 26 more people saved, it's 26 households more saved, so that could be a lot more than 26. And then, obviously, wherever these people go who've been vaccinated, it makes them safer as well. So I think it's, it's something that does need to be included. And if there is anyone that is still got reservations around the vaccine, you just please ask them to call myself or, or, or Diane and, and we'll, we'll put them through the appropriate channels to try to get them vaccinated. The figures are still, I'm still waiting on some answers actually from the NHS. I sent them another email this morning um, because I know lots of people on the Hajjul side of, of Bromford and Hajjid, they're, they're abroad currently in, in Kashmir because there's some elections happening there. I know at least 100 people that are there and none of them have had a vaccination. So I think once people have come back, once they um, stop the the, self, the quarantine in hotels in places like Pakistan, we'll have a lot more people back and get the vaccination numbers up again. Um, I do think, Chair, that we, we do really need to um, push the um, police now to attend the meeting. There's so many issues that come up on a daily basis now from residents. I get so many um, complaints around speeding cars now. I mean, Dryley Grove was one that was highlighted this weekend. Stan Lake Avenue, there's been a number of car thefts from there. There's also a number of abandoned vehicles, which we always try to report and try to get removed, but it's not as easy as it used to be pre-COVID. It so takes it'll be good. three months at least to get a vehicle removed. That's um, also, you know, this yeah. is something that needs to be shared with residents. And so it would be good if we could get the police at, at a future yeah. oh, put pressure on the police again we, well, do, we do have a new sergeant so i think it would be nice to to meet him um, so i think it'd be good if we could do that so yeah. that's about it from me and obviously yeah drug dealing has been mentioned that yeah drug dealing that's that's been passed on to the police um, so it's something that i think we do we do need to have a special one around crime I mean, that would be really really useful if we could do that so we can um, the next the next month, meeting, we can dedicate that to um, safer communities. Crime. Yeah, safer yeah, right. communities. Because we're yeah yeah safer communities for next month. I think would be really good, and then we can have an update one around the Commonwealth Games. We're still not sure yet if we can have a face to face world forum. Still waiting for details on that because um, a number of residents have actually informed us that they prefer the online world forums. So it might be when restrictions are lifted in their entirety that we have a face-to-face -face meeting and an online meeting, so perhaps two a month. I don't know. It's it's up to residents. I'm here for whatever residents prefer for us to do. Obviously, good news around the Pato repairs. Finally, they're coming onto Bromford Drive. Um, and there's a de two dates in one or two dates in this month and two dates in in August, and hopefully that will uh, bring about some meaningful changes to 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 Bromford Drive. That's about it from me, Chen. You can probably hear my phone going off. Um, I need to take um, that as well. Thank you, thank you, Majid. Uh, I've got Mohammed who's asking a question about the, the old Holbrook Tower site. Um, we will be having uh, an update more about the, the housing developments. Um, we'll get somebody, the, one of the um, Planners to come along and talk to you about that uh, at one of the next meetings. Or the, we've got a meeting scheduled in August, so either August or September meeting. So we'll dedicate one to the police and one to more of the regeneration issues. Um, I'm just looking at these questions. Just bear with me a moment. Uh, speeding, yeah, yeah, we'll. We'll bring all the speeding issues into the to the police meeting, so if we can get all the questions ready for the police for the next meeting. Um, I've had a, a meeting with the um, police and other agencies around around the fly tipping and the mobile CCTV cameras that um, the city is now in possession of. There's eleven cameras that that um, available for. For use but 11 is for the whole city so to get hold of a camera for a, uh, an antisocial behavior or fly tipping hotspot we need to provide as much evidence as possible so that means that you know if you've got any issues email them to me please or to council to or to both of us um so we've got the evidence of, of this is taking place because 
it's not always there if it's if it's on social media it, it's it's not getting logged it's not there so please please email us with all the 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 hot spots for uh, antisocial behavior drug dealing um fly tipping everything so we can urge you know to try and get what mobile cctv cameras in in the hot spots on bromford and around the ward Okay, Louise, yeah, inbox me with um, what, whatever it is. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and that's, that's about it. Any more questions? I think Sarah's typing away furiously. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming along this evening, and we'll get all the information. Paul, you've got your hand up. Do you want to come in? Um, yeah, I, I thought we were going to get an update on the, the park development out, uh, outside the hub and the possible part of the park development on Berendale Road. I thought that was mentioned in the um, agenda for tonight. We haven't got um, the finalised plans. The, the All the... Um, So it went out to the community. That's all the information has been collated. So, and now they're working on the final design. You know, on... say I can help you out. I had a conversation with one of the officers, and uh, the designs are uh, near, like, as you said, nearing finalisation. So they'll be coming to us shortly, and then we can share them with with residents and on the old former Warstone site. And on the Burn Day one, the, the work's going to on the design, the works are going to commence in the next few weeks. They were saying late summer, so that usually means end of August. But be mindful, August seems to be a month where lots of officers do take their breaks, and, and so they should. Everyone's entitled to to holiday. So hopefully we'll have something possibly September to come back to the Ward Forum with. So there's, I think, 12, 12 play, play equipment they're looking at around the former Warstone site based on the consultation that was carried out we've had I think more than 300 responses uh, based on that so they've collated all of that and they're making the designs we'll bring something back and if it's before another ward forum we'll just put it out on on social media, on social media. Have a look at and share with and bear in mind that's ongoing the other the other news we have got is the green piece of land on hill cross which initially was penciled in for development of housing we're now looking at that site as a potential pocket park because we've got nothing there on that side, and that's the one I'll be having a conversation with HS2 to see if, if there's any funding that could be secured around that. So then hopefully, now we've got hardly any play areas, in, in 12 months' time, we may yeah. have too many play areas. Never too many. Never where, too where we, where we want to be. start consultation on, on those and to see what people yeah. would like. Yeah, but you, yeah, Paul, you're right, never too many. Uh, Louise, Warstone site is by the hub. That's where the uh, Warstone Tower was next to the um, supermarket. So effectively where the uh, pocket part will go, more or less. OK. Too many in the sense that we will have complaints from people in other parts of the ward and the constituency saying they've got so many new parks now and we've got hardly any. But yeah, I agree, Paul. never too many, the more the merry. In fact, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer everyone should be within walking distance, short walking distance of a park. Right, well, th well thank you everyone for coming along this evening. Thank you for your attendance and uh, your participation. Um, I'll circulate, we've got, we'll have a meeting um, in August. Uh, around probably if we can get the police here uh, and I'll get a firm response from the police that they will attend because they have let us down in the past. Um, we can put that whole meeting around um, community safety and policing issues. Right, well, enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone, and thank you 
to all the presenters who's come along and thank you everyone for attending. I hope you found it useful. Yeah, thank you everyone. Have a good evening and stay safe. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.